I'd say that although at the moment this is only a 12 month scheme, there isn't a scheme from the 1st of April 2015 that we won't be specifically funding. Yes, your idea is one of those that we've already got. Should circumstances be reviewed? Should there be exceptions where people may get more than one? Um, because effectively we, the scheme that you're reading is what we put forward as our best alter, our best view as to how this scheme would meet approximately the funding that we've got. Um, clearly at the start when we did the report it was clear that we weren't spending as much as the grant was. We are now looking as though we are fairly close if those levels keep up to being certainly 70-75% spend in a year giving us some potential fluctuations um, that may well either come up or down, but we are much closer than we originally thought, uh, as the original report said that this was, like most authorities, a low underspend. Most authorities certainly we engage with are also finding that this has started moving up um, into that kind of area. So very much the report is to say it has moved up, there is a call for this, but there may not be a specific point next year as to what we do, but it will be much higher. As you said, about three quarters of a million eight hundred thousand would seem fairly reasonable for what we expect to spend. Thanks, Chair. Um, I just wanted to say that um, my concern, like Bill's, is also about this two-year time period. Um, if you look at the um, the figures in paragraph 218, it says 45% of applicants have dependent children, and it also would appear that the majority of those would, would um, be single parents. Um, I, can, I can see that a single adult or a, a, an adult couple um, in dire circumstances might be able to survive one way or another for a two-year period without any further help or any kind of crisis support. But I think that's a completely different kettle of fish when children are concerned. And I hope whatever discussions do happen in the future, that particular issue is taken into account. Yes, sure. We would take that into account with regard to the family composition. Um, clearly, uh, young children, again, will be acknowledged within this as to try and support. But again, it comes back to the real question, Councillor Gilchrist. At the moment, it is one every two years. Uh, and clearly what we're dealing with is what scheme will we have in place, if any, from the 1st of April 15. But yes, I would accept that those circumstances uh, very more um, timely uh, as to whether or not it's just two years would be appropriate. But that will obviously depend on what scheme is available next year as well. Uh, question about 212, sorry, 412. Are those figures cumulative? You, um, as of 31st December 13, 389,000 have been spent in effect to the red awards. At the end of February 14, is it increased to 561? Is that that's a cumulative figure? Uh, through you, Chair, yes, at that point it was 561,000 the local welfare scheme that spent. Yeah. Total spent. So we've been given 2.6 million. For this year, 1.3 million. We've got now another 1.3, so that 560 is against the first 1.3 million, yes. Okay, so we've been given 2.6 and we spent 5.6 well, thus far. Okay, so it just strikes that that's our money to keep. It's an administrative administration's question as to whether they renew this scheme. And based on those figures, we've got four or five years with the scheme left, probably. And, and from the original spend levels, uh, because that first five, six, one includes weeks, um, as I put in paragraph 233, uh, some of those weeks we'd started at only about £5,000 a week was paying out. By the time we get to February, March this year, we're paying out £24,000 a week. So clearly some of the 5,000s that we did at the start are now not going to be replicated in the next financial year. We're in the £20,000 a week mark. So the 561, as we met, is probably a low view. We are looking at probably spending 750, 800,000 this year. Again, that could be, it could go up, it could go down. 
but our best estimate at this moment is so we would love to be spending another 800,000. Uh, you are correct, it is up to the local authority to decide what it does with regards to that grant, both as to how it's spent and where it's spent, including we don't actually have to have a scheme at all, to actually using it totally on the scheme for however long it lasts. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have about 17 questions for so many pages, so apologies. Um, I'll, I'll start at the end, just because it's a bit following on from that point. Um, so we have £24,000 a week, that's correct. Yeah. Um, and it was 5000 at the start. Yeah. So the trend is significantly going up. Uh, I would say that at about the 20,000, we haven't seen any significant ongoing increases. So I couldn't sit here and say I'm going to project in three months' time, we'll be to about 30,000. We projected that about 20,000, 24,000 would be about the spend, taking some seasonal variations where we suspect we won't get as many. Uh, effectively, during the summer, they increase more in winter. So 20 ish thousand is a good average to take. You know, I and so, but I mean, with the uh, the other measures, the other measures that's coming in, and people inevitably the, the, the effect that's going to take on a bit later down the line, I can't really see that falling myself. Do you, with, with your knowledge, see that that will be falling? Because to me, it only seems to be able to. It's only going to rise, really. Um, in the current circumstances, we couldn't project that we're going to see a reduction uh, in in the amounts that we're paying. So on that basis, just for the committee, that is just two years then, because that's 1.248 million a year, isn't it, at 24,000 a week. So it's two years, pretty much. Is that fair? No. no. no if, effectively, we started about 5,000. It then slowly rises up to about 24,000. So effectively, we would look at this year taking ups and downs during the summer to spend our, our a balance of the 1.3 million, we would project at least 750,000, would be spent on direct payments on the scheme for the current financial year of 1450. But that takes that into account that it was considerably lower, and as the report says, because people didn't really know about it, but the 24,000 now, on that basis, is two years worth. Yes. Okay. Right. Um, I was wondering, I was curious, 4.3.3, um, it says that there was an increase in customers who were upset, angry, or angry, or worried, um, and increasingly my staff were the staff. I, obviously, completely understand that and both people there. We're giving training to the staff. Is there any other support we are offering them? I'm just conscious that at the moment, again, you know, it's, it's not um, it's job secure, uh, not the time of great job security. Um, it's obviously an emotionally difficult thing for them to have to deal with anyway. So what other support are we offering them? Uh, through you, Chair, it will be all the normal uh, work we will tend to do on our, with our face-to-face -face team. Um, because in the main it is the face-to-face -face areas that we'll deal with it. We do have some um, experienced benefits officers who deal with discretionary housing payment that also deal with this. We do offer them, obviously, support uh, as is required. And um, certainly, as I think the report wants to signify, the level of dispute and upset that we see at the point of when we have to tell somebody you don't get it, or in fact how much you're getting, is something that we generally uh, had some knowledge of, um, um, but this is certainly seen a rise in that. Staff are aware of what they can access um, effectively to try and support them. Um, through. There isn't, I couldn't sit here and say there's been a significant increase, for instance, in people accessing counselling on a work basis, but they know where to access it, particularly with regards to one stop shops, because of the tenants that tend to be. Other areas of services that we deal with where the high emotions tends to be seen as well. I think it's usually because it's generally people sit back and quite worried about how stuff morale would be affected. And um, 4.1.2, um, it's it gives figures and across and so many separate awards. I just wonder what the average award is under the DWP and under our own scheme. Through you, Chair, I don't know what the DWP average um, is, but one of the main ones that they now do is obviously it is a loan or an advance. So whatever they give, it is then clawed back through your benefits, whereas this is a grant. Uh, the average payment um, is about £60 for what we would give. Um, that is excluding the one that's highlighted white goods because they will tend to be much higher because that would be normally fixed, uh, putting in 
uh, fixtures and fittings to a uh, property but um, with regards to uh, what we would refer to as a white butter cooker, um, fridge, so on and so forth. So taking those out, roughly the average will be about 60, maybe 70 pounds. We don't know what it was under the DWB, so we can't estimate or a bit of um, I couldn't, I could certainly try and get those figures and give them to you. I can wait for you to be able to, please. Um, I think there's a few, sorry, Chair, I mean, I'll, I'll work to make it. You keep, 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 keep it ready. I will, yeah, 2.28, sorry. Um, 2.28, the application was reviewed on appeal. And it doesn't say how many, and so I'm misreading, it doesn't say how many were upheld. From you, Chair, you are correct. It doesn't, I uh, don't have the details, I'm quite happy to get how many of those uh, were either upheld or dismissed. And, and I'd appreciate the rationale behind them there being upheld and dismissed as well, please. Um, do you know how quickly we get the support to people that said um, processed within a day, but how quickly does that manifest itself into being the end? As through the chair, it would normally be we would then call people in to immediately attend one of the one stop shops to pick up whatever the payment is. And um, certainly at this time of year, uh, it will not be what a one day turnaround because obviously, again, because of what, what we do in the March April period, it will be a longer time scale. And certainly, the one day turnaround is only for food, utilities, it isn't for the more detailed white goods which will probably involve a visit to check that effectively there is a requirement for those goods to be installed, which tends not to be the case with regards to a claim for utility and food support. So the term on food as well and utility are the most important ones there in terms of the immediacy. So that's done in, in how many days do they get that support? Roughly average. Uh, at the moment it will have extended from when this report was written from one day, it certainly will be about three days before, as they come in, they're then called in the following working day to pick up, uh, fact, uh, it's effectively a payment card, which is then accessible to be used as a variety. It's effectively a loaded cash card or to a, a given limit, which we tell you, and hopefully uh, it limits us to what can it can be spent on. Uh, effectively focusing on what they've claimed, so the utility one, how can that be used just on utilities. The food one is slightly more difficult for us to ensure that it is only um, purchasing food because of people who then go into a shop. We can't actually stop you buying non-food items. It should be able to alert us when we do actually have a reconciliation process to ensure that it is spent in the approximate area that we would expect. And we had any alerts to suggest that it hasn't been. Through the chair, with regards to the numbers, yes, clearly with the numbers that we do, there are a number where they've been spent uh, what may be described as incorrectly, and we take uh, activities to try and ensure first off that it's not spent uh, effectively blocking a type of transaction and then also taking a look at the individual in certain circumstances where it may not have been used for the correct uh, area that they planned for. Sorry, Chair, there's now more than three, three last questions, if that's okay. I do think this is really important, though. I think, I don't think the Council just not scrutinising this part, I think it's okay. I'm grateful for your answers, Malcolm, as well. Um, if, am I limited to one question? Or? Um, which one? Um, this one then. Uh, 2.21, page 35. Um, DWP has a severely restricted scheme of hardship payments. Um, what, and obviously it's very difficult then for our residents to access that, um, what support can we offer our residents in accessing that? Um, and what lobbying can we do to the DWP to, to run the app and maybe expose it as well? Through so you, clearly it's a national DWP scheme. We can support people who come to us uh, with regards to applications they make, but effectively it would then be going through the DWP application process. Um, which the DWP would expect the individuals to take through. We can explain where they go and apply for that, and um, we can even uh, show what they've applied here, but effectively it is down to the individual to try and apply. Uh, the other thing was, uh, was a thing for a follow-up later, so it's not a question now, if that's okay. Um, on 2119, 36% of applicants come from tenants of registered social landlords. I just wondered if you could advise on those who have been hit by impacts. Um, through the chair, I haven't got the figures as to how many of the applicants under the LWA scheme. Um, we clearly know how many uh, registered social landlords 
uh, tenants have been affected by the spur and subsidy reductions um, as to actually comparing which ones are which, we could look at that to give you figures. Uh, again, through you, Chair, if anybody does have any specific questions they'd like to ask, um, A, I'm here at the end, and also if they wish to email me, I'm more than happy to go through and give you answers to any of the questions that this report may have raised. Thanks, Thanks, And just take one final question from the recommendations.
I would put on the table to propose it and go second it. Could we just add to that as well? I, I think the timing of, of, of that is critical. If you do this towards the, if you don't do it almost immediately, it won't tie into the decision making for budget and decision making for if if it comes about that you want to transfer this to the voluntary sector, you would need to have a, a decision made plus a, a few months lead time on this, especially because of IT systems and, and benefits uh, information involved. So. I, I would add to that recommendation, it's going to be timely. And I'm quite happy to accept that. Okay, does that agree? Does anyone else got any other? I think that, I think that resolution is a, a bit of a catch all, and no, we can go into you know, detailed conversations. I, I still don't think it sends the message to the executive that, that this money has been made available for our most vulnerable residents and we would be disheartened to see it used in, in any other way. Well, I think the task of the I I think we need to make a value statement tonight, so I'd be asking for a further recommendation that we say. Um, I, d I know we can't tie, tie the executive in terms of budget making decisions, but we can send a value statement to the executive. Chair, I second that form of words. <laughs>
We also then have uh, a regular on some changes with regards to any uh, local awards uh, taking account of valuable money uh, elements, which needs to be uh, also factored in. Um, and we have a transfer of responsibility of setting a new code and all the practice uh, going down to the National Audit Office as part of these arrangements. So you see that in a bit more detail, in fact, actually some of those provisions go in more detail. Um, in terms of our current arrangements, there are sourcing arrangements in place, and as you know, we have Ralph Thornton, who is the external auditor for the council, and that arrangement continues until uh, 2017, at which point uh, arrangements will be put in place for the appointment of a new local auditor, and this is where the auditor panel will be engaged in the procurement of that particular body. There will be a series of approved accredited firms that will be able to do that, and they will be uh, made in the subject to um, assessment and criteria by the Financial Reporting Council and the relevant professional accountants and bodies who will regulate the uh, provision of local audit services. In terms of the panel itself, um, details of its makeup are set out in paragraph 6 of the expansion note, and this is where we need to have a panel which must consist of the majority of independent members um, and we can be chaired by the independent member. Our uh, Audit and Risk Management Committee can act as the council auditor panel under the Act of Third Right, um, and if we need to appoint individuals, uh, then there will be a process that will need to be uh, gone through. Um, you'll recall that the Audit and Risk Management Committee at the last part of last year indicated that it wished the majority of members of the Audit and Risk Management Committee to be independent, uh, and they've uh, it's our account to look at making uh, those necessary arrangements. However, uh, the Secretary of State is called yet to publish regulations in relation to uh, this, this particular act, and particularly the criteria uh, which appears to be expanded upon from what appears in the act itself. So the draft regulations are not complete in terms of what the criteria will be for the appointment of independent members. Uh, and as such, um, a decision will be taken to await the act will only be those for the final regulations to ensure that any improvement that is made is compliant with those regulations. Chairman, still your comments on the appointments. Thanks, Edison. Any other questions, comments? Paragraph 215, um, access information relating to the decision made in those meetings. I wonder if you could just um, expand a little bit on that. Um, specifically in the functions committee, we have um, uh, attachments which are um, not available to the public in the business meetings. And I just wonder if there's any change to the way those are treated. No, there's no proposed change with regards to information that the committee is considering the, the exam schedule scheduled for there. So if those provisions remain unchanged, this is very much the ability to report in every session of that committee meetings, individuals being able to not only fill the toilet for um, the information in real time with regards to decisions as and when they're made. There's no further questions, we move to the recommendations on page 55. 1.1, we agree? Now on Amber, but you can see that in the comments column, uh, 
the work now falls on the Community Council project. And what we can confirm is that as a consequence of that, uh, we've now made speedy progress uh, against it, um, and we're currently verifying the final information. And I'm uh, confident that this, if we were to see this again in, 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 a, in another week, we'd actually be green. So I'm going to certainly make progress in that. And the final thing to say, Joe, just in terms of DP16, um, which is the, the average number of days respond to complaints. I think this is an interesting one for this committee uh, because it does transcend the responsibilities that we have uh, as part of our corporate arrangements because clearly uh, the complaints don't just refer to the complaints within the, the Transformation Resources Directorate, they're actually part and parcel of the whole of the Council's position. Um, so the responsibility certainly rests with me and this committee in terms of the, the corporate performance around this, uh, this particular information, which is a big similar to the FOI uh, responses. So I think in terms of uh, recognising that this particular uh, committee transcends not only the, the, the directorate, but also sometimes it, it does actually have an influence and is directly influenced by performance of, of, of other directorates as well. So with that, Joe, I just want to close my comments and uh, Thank you.